Good morning, church. Is it time? <laughs> Hang on while we adjust the set. All right, I think it's 10 o'clock on the hour. So we'll take away my stack of hymnals and other books as we begin for our time of worship. You are here with the Chambersburg Circuit, sorry. And as you can see, uh, we are back. Can you hear me? Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Um, I, I have no idea what you're seeing, what you're hearing, uh, but it is good to see you, to see your names coming up as we join together in worship this morning. Um, I don't see any thumbs up, so I'm going to assume, <laughs> although they say never do that, um, that you're hearing me okay this morning. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit as we begin about the process, the journey that um, we've been on this morning. So um, there would have been five of us at St. John's for the worship experience. And at um, yesterday I said, is seven o'clock okay to make this decision? And everyone agreed 7 a.m. would be great. Turn the phone just a little, whatever that means. <laughs> um, that 7 a.m. would be great. So at 7 a.m., we decided let's go into St. John's Church to have our worship experience together. And um, then about 8, 8 o'clock, 8.15, I said, are we still making that same decision? Because now the snow is coming down pretty heavy. And, um, you know, I don't love driving in the snow. And we all decided, you know what? Let's go old school. So today brought back so many memories of um, last March, I guess it was, maybe April, when uh, that very first day I had known that it was coming. And so I got the equipment from St. John's Church. And that morning, that Sunday morning, had it all set up and ready to go at about 9.30 a.m. And... By the time it came to record, the uh, internet connection had disconnected and the Mevo machine had turned off and it was obvious that that wasn't gonna work. And so in the last five minutes before 10 a.m., I was getting my phone ready and said, how, how do I do this? I've never done Facebook Live before. And so I was thinking this morning just about um, the entire COVID season and how, what have I learned from that? One thing is flexibility. One thing is God's faithfulness. Um, in the midst of all the decisions that we've had to be through, and I think decisions are one of the hardest things um, that I've experienced as a pastor. You know, do we open or not open? Do we insist on masks or make that optional? Um, you know, is it time for this or that? And uh, so I am, I just wanted to start the morning just saying I'm so grateful for the leadership at both Park Avenue Church and at St. John's Churches. Uh, both of them have been so supportive and instrumental in helping to make good decisions for our church family. So as we begin our time of worship together, I want to share with you from Psalm 16. That's not it. Let's try again here. Let's breathe together and welcome the Lord through these words of scripture. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night, my heart instructs me. 
I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With God at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Thanks be to God. On the order of worship, the candles would be lit as the prelude plays. I thought it would be important for us to light a candle. as we celebrate and honor the presence of God in this place. Will you take a moment with me to quiet your heart and to just calm our spirits, to open ourselves to what all God would have in this day. Let's pray. How grateful we are, Lord God, for technology that allows us to meet even when it's snowing, even when there's a pandemic, even when we can't be together, Lord, as I see the names coming up, my heart just surges with love for these people who are family. We are family together because of the blood of Jesus shed for us, making us brothers and sisters in Christ. And as we light the candle, Lord, we ask that you would quiet our hearts. You would remind us that you are the light inside each of us. And that as we worship together, that you are our God. We long to bring glory to you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is Open My Eyes. Um, for the past three weeks, we have spent time with the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, <laughs> of course, um, but understanding more about the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit has gifted us for service in God's kingdom. And um, while the study is still going on on Zoom in the Sunday evenings, um, we are moving on to uh, just three weeks uh, on a sermon series that God definitely inspired in me. It didn't come from anywhere else, but the Spirit of God open our eyes. And so I look forward to sharing with you this first week in um, a passage that I've never preached on before, but how appropriate the hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. Now, um, since this was a last minute call, we don't have words for you. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to sing the first verse, but I'll read the words for the second and third uh, because they're so, so profound and it can be our prayer as we worship together. If you happen to have a hymnal at your home, it's number 454 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Looks like that. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Verses 2 and 3 say, Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth. Thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Let's sing the chorus again. 
Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me. Spirit divine. Amen. May that be our prayer today. And speaking of prayer, we come already to our prayer time. And uh, we do rejoice together in the ways that we have seen God at work. We rejoice also for God's mercy in difficult times. And in these days um, of grief and of loss and of loneliness, God is always faithful. And so we rejoice with Ron and Louise. Uh, Ron had successful surgery in Hershey um, Thursday and um, maybe Wednesday. And uh, the great thing is that Louise, who has not seen him since the surgery, is able to go. She's there now and tomorrow will be able to go into the hospital room to visit with her husband and is looking forward to that. Continued prayers for them. Uh, Ron is not able to sit up, but his bed is at a 45 degree angle for a month. So difficult times and we encourage you to be in prayer for them. Uh, we also pray for Bill Kessinger, who went to Menno Haven Rehab, and for Peg in her missing him, uh, the connection between husband and wife. We just um, ask that you would continue praying for that situation. I had a text just a few minutes ago from Mel. We have been praying for a friend of theirs named Katie with brain cancer. She stepped into eternity just this morning, and so we pray for all those who grieve that loss. And we know that many are grieving. We, um, we recognize Jim Mack and his loss and a service that was held for him yesterday and for all of those who love and miss him. And you know, I thought I could just begin saying names and there are many because grief is a strange thing. It's not just because this week I lost someone, but maybe a year or many years ago and the grief is still strong or hits uh, when you least expect it so we do pray for those we would love to hear from you um, i have swiped away the comments but uh, following the service i will continue in prayer for the things that you mentioned below and things that we may not be aware of and uh, so we ask you to just comment please and let us know how we can be praying for you or those loved ones of which you're aware. Feel free also to text or email me um, and let me know privately uh, any concerns that you may be experiencing. Um, there is a little chorus that also goes with our theme for the day. Open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Let's sing that together as we come and quiet our hearts for the prayer time. Open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that I love him. Open my ears, Lord, and help me to listen, open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Anyone watching may think it's strange that while we're singing open my eyes, we're actually closing our eyes. I just find that so natural in the spiritual uh, part because it does help us to close off from the distractions or even the beauty um, around us. And um, speaking of beauty, I do wanna just point out my amaryllis, which finally decided to bloom. Arlene Floor had given it, given it to Bob and I for Christmas, and it was underneath the surface of this um, container. You couldn't see a thing. 
and then day after day and week after week, um, it grew and grew and grew. And finally, finally, those buds burst into flowers. And for me, that is hope. It's just a reminder that when we don't see things working or we don't see God at work, that there are things that we don't see, we don't understand, we don't know, but God is faithful. God is watching for us and in God's perfect time, those things will come to fruition. So we rejoice in that. Let's pray together. How we praise you, Lord God. We praise you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We praise you that you are sovereign over all. We praise you that you are able to be here in my dining room and every living room and dining room and kitchen, not just now, but in the future as people participate in worship through this technology. We are so grateful. We thank you, Spirit of God, that you have called us and stirred us and gifted us. And we pray, Lord God, that we would sense you today, that our time together wouldn't just be um, out of obligation. There is no way that these people have come out of obligation. They could be doing so many other things on this snow day. And yet here we are together because our desire is to grow in you, to offer to you our praise and our thanksgiving, to bring our concerns to you, Lord, and to share together in the confidence that you are faithful, you are who you say you are, and you have our best interests at heart. So in the difficult times, Lord, when we are kind of buried beneath our loads, we pray that we'd remember that, that you are with us and you are for us. For all of these things that we have mentioned, for the comments that people have written, for those things that we hold deep inside that we've not even shared with our best friend, we pray that you, Lord God, in your perfect plan, your perfect timing, would cause all things to work together for our good and for the good of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus. What a powerful, awesome, matchless, strong name that we pray. This man, this God, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours, O Lord, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And it's time for offering. Wow, this day is just zipping by. <laughs> um, so I wanted you to know, church at Park Avenue especially, um, so St. John's has had um, for a long time a valuable finance chair and treasurer, um, people who have an eye to the finances of the church for quite a while. But Park Avenue has had a absence for a couple of years. And um, we rejoice that William Bauer has sorry, William Boyer has stepped forward in that position as finance chair at Park Avenue Church. It will be great to have somebody just helping us to make wise decisions financially for the good of the church. And Tuesday evening, we have our first meeting of the year, 2021, that William has called. And I ask that you would be in prayer about that. Just uh, again, that we would be good stewards of what God has given to us. Um, as we make good decisions that way. And also, your offerings make a difference in those decisions. Your generosity, your continuity, um, that even in these challenging times, you have seen that we continue to serve 
the God of the universe and that God has chosen the church to be that tool that will um, help people come to Christ. So thank you for your generous giving. You can mail your checks in or just drop them off in the church office um, at either church. Also, though, I wanted to take a moment just to remind you how things are going to look. <laughs> That's funny because we didn't expect today to look like this. So, Lord willing, I will add, um, we have um, made decisions regarding the reopening of church and um, at Park Avenue. So, what you need to know is for the month of February, we'll still be on air at 10 a.m., uh, we'll be broadcasting from one of the two churches. Um, but you're welcome on February 21st to join us for in-person worship. Again, Lord willing, we know that there are all kinds of things that could happen and change in that amount of time. Um, and so on the 21st, we'll keep you posted. Um, and then March 7th, we'll be resuming our old schedule, Lord willing. And... Um, that is 9.15 at St. John's Church and 10.45 at Park Avenue Church. So let's just leave it in God's hands. That's just the best place to leave it. Uh, if you have anything else that you need us to know, would you write that in the comments so that we can all be aware of it? Ian and Heather were going to play a nice duet for us, and I'm hoping that that can happen in two weeks from now. So um, I know Ian's probably on there watching. We look forward to hearing that instrumental duet. So we come to this part that I have anticipated. <laughs> you guys know me. Um, it's, it's not that this is anything new. It's that it was so exciting to dive deeper into God's word and to discover some things that I hadn't thought about for probably a long, long time. And um, so I'm going to share them with you. Now, typically in our worship services, we would start at the beginning and, um, and read through the whole scripture and then I would unpack some of that. That isn't happening today. I um, Instead, we're going to look at the scripture as we go. So it might feel kind of like a Bible study. That's okay. It's God's word. And what I really pray is that in the end, you will have received something that is for now, today, um, this coming week, this season, that will encourage you in your faith and remind you of God's goodness to us. So it was a while ago now. I, I wanna say it was spring, um, could have been summer, probably was summer because the church was open. Um, when Elijah came to visit at Park Avenue. Now at St. John's, we, we had the same story, but um, we heard from Elijah firsthand uh, at Park Avenue Church, and we met this guy. This is Soba, um, and he reminded us of God's provision for us no matter what. It's good to have you back with us, Soba. Uh, Soba is the word for provision, and here he is close up. Um, yeah, we're glad you're here because Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament who we read just a little piece of Elijah's story. But he was a miracle worker and um, really did a lot of wonderful things and reminded the people about um, how they should be serving the Lord. So, but Elijah got kind of discouraged and he went and hung out by the brook and the ravens came and fed him. It was quite a miracle. Um, what we didn't talk about though was that Elijah had... Uh, a helper, and his name was, is Elisha. So I wanted to tell you, yeah, really, um, how to keep those two apart. Because when Elijah's time came, he did not die. Instead, a chariot came and swooped him up and took him off to heaven while Elisha was watching. And when that happened, um, Elisha prayed a prayer, may your mantle, 
the cloak that he wore fall on me with a double portion of the same spirit that Elijah had been ministering in. So here's how I remember it. Elijah, with a J, jumped into heaven and did not die, but miraculously went to heaven. Elijah jumped and Elisha, with an S, stayed. Okay, that's just the simplified version and hope, hopefully that helps you. Like, which one went to heaven? It was Elijah because he jumped into heaven. When he went to heaven, Elisha began doing the same or similar or even more miracles um, by the power of God's Spirit. And um, you can read about those in an odd place. And here's why I say it's odd, because it's in the books of First and Second Kings. Well, a book named Kings seems like it would be about kings. And indeed it is. It goes through the various kings that were ruling the land at the time. But if you say, you know what, I never read Kings before. I think I'll read about this guy, Elijah and Elisha, these two guys, um, or about the kings. Feel free to do that, but be on the lookout for prophets and priests as well as kings. That's what you'll see in the books, the Old Testament books of First and Second Kings. So, Elijah jumped into heaven. Elisha stayed and prayed that the mantle would fall on him with a double portion. When I was raised as a little girl in the Nazarene church, we would sing the song. And um, I thought about it, of course, in preparation for this message and thought, well, what were the verses? Now, most of the songs, the hymns that we sang um, in the church, I memorized just from singing them over and over again. And um, this was no exception, except that I couldn't remember how the verses went. And I'm, I'm not going to... Um, go back and sing the verses for you, but I did look them up and it tells this story of Elijah going to heaven and Elisha uh, receiving the double portion. Now, a double portion was reserved for the firstborn. It was an identifier that the oldest male in the family would receive twice as much of an inheritance as um, those that came after him. So Elisha was asking for a double portion of the same spirit that had guided Elijah. And here's how the song goes, just the chorus. Let thy mantle fall on me. Now I'm gonna forget. Mantle fall on me. A double portion of thy spirit, Lord. Let thy mantle fall on me. And what I remember was Jim Kessler leading the singing, and we would get to that a double portion of thy spirit, Lord. And the whole congregation would hold that until his hands went down. And we would hold it for a long time. And then let also would be held for a long time. Anyway, I didn't understand it as a little girl. What's a double portion? What's thy spirit? But then, in the latter verses, um, it likened this Old Testament story to a request for God to pour out God's Spirit on us, that we too would sense and know God's Spirit in a way that we hadn't known before, a double portion, um, even more than we could ask or imagine. And so, the translation from Old Testament into New Testament when the Spirit of God came was new for me as an adult and uh, just a wonderful thing. Okay, all of that wasn't even the sermon yet. <laughs> Stick in here with me because this is where it gets good. Um, as I said, Eli Elisha began to do many miracles as well and prophesy in God's name. So that was the role of a prophet to tell the people what is God saying to us. Now we have the Holy Spirit to do that right into our own hearts. But at the time, men of God were the ones who were the voice of God and, um, and told people how to live and how to serve God. But we're going to start in 2 Kings chapter 6 because it's a really fun miracle story 
And if you have your Bible there, um, 2 Kings chapter 6, the first six, seven verses tell us just a nice story, and I'm going to read it for us. The company of the prophets, okay? So Elijah wasn't, Elisha, sorry, he stayed, wasn't the only prophet of the day. Uh, there were many prophets and, um, okay, stick with me. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. Sounds like an Amish barn, barn raising. Everybody's going to get a pole and we're going to build a new place. Then he said, go. And one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. Did you ever borrow something from someone and you tried your best to take care of it, but something went wrong? and you didn't know how to tell the person, oh, I'm so sorry this got broken, or this ran for me for a little while, but then it conked out. That's how this guy was feeling. He was chopping trees with his ax, and the ax head came off. <laughs> it just flew off. I have never used an ax, I have to admit. But maybe some of you can relate Maybe the ax head that you were chopping with flew off while well, this guy's flew into the water. The man of God asked, where did it fall? That's Elisha. And when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. That's all the Bible tells us, but you know, an ax head, if you're gonna use it for chopping down trees, is at least three pounds and probably heavier than that. But the big thing, it's made out of iron. So what's it gonna do? Yes, sink to the bottom of the river or the creek, you know, whatever. It was too deep for this man to wade in and pick it up off the bottom of the river. And uh, so, it was the Jordan River, that's right. So Elisha threw the stick in and up came the ax head floating on the water. <laughs> we prayed this morning, didn't we? That sometimes we feel buried under a heavy load. That ax head was buried deep in those waters of the Jordan. But Elisha threw the stick spoke the word, and God showed favor, and that ax head floated. <laughs> An iron three or four pound ax head floated to the top. We serve a God of miracles. Those miracles have not stopped, and maybe you have one today that you say, I don't know how to explain that. That was God, because God is still in the miracle doing business. That's not even the end of the message. Now the good part begins. So here uh, in verse eight now, we're gonna start and stop and start and stop. If you're following along in your Bible, that's great, but I'm not gonna read it straight through. I have some explaining to do as we go. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. Stop. The king of Aram was an enemy and they were at war with Israel. Now, this was not a new thing. Even today, you know that there is warring in the Middle East, that Israel um, is always under siege and the surrounding countries are always at war. So the king of Aram, okay, we'll hear about them later, the Arameans are at war with Israel, okay? Aram, Israel. After conferring with his officers, he, the king of Aram, said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. Now, that's in the scripture. I didn't make that up because I couldn't pronounce the name of the town. He just He's just nebulous here. I'll set my camp in such and such a place. The man of God, who do we know that is? Elisha, sent word to the king of Israel. 
here's Aram, here's Israel. He says, I'm going to set up camp in such and such a place. And Elisha tells the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. Friends, sometimes, don't we get warnings about going, participating in something or doing something, going to a certain place? How often do we not heed those warnings and get in trouble? But that didn't happen in the story. The king of Israel listened to the man of God, avoided those places or was especially on the lookout there and on his guard and nothing happened. No war broke out at that time. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. What is he saying? Who's the double agent? I know that one of you snuck out of here after you heard where we were going and you told the king of Israel where we're going. None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who's in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. So, what does that say to us today? Okay, take the bedroom out of the equation. Elisha, the prophet of God, was speaking on God's behalf all the time. What he's saying is that God knows everything that's going on. It wasn't Elisha didn't have ears in the bedroom or ears in the palace when they were discussing their war strategy. God himself had revealed to Elisha these things. So God looks deep in our hearts too. God knows what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're feeling. He knows our intentions. Um, God knows everything. So I don't say that as a warning, but as a truth. In the Psalms, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So God knows what we're going through. I love that because it saves time for one thing. <laughs> I don't have a lot of explaining to God like, hey, this happened and then that happened, you know, whatever. God help me is a prayer that we can pray and God already knows what's going on. Okay, so go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Nobody knows where Dothan is, right? Raise your hand. Well, it's actually a town in Alabama, but that's not the one we're talking about now. Dothan was just a small town in a fertile valley surrounded by hills uh, um, on every side. And it's where Elisha lived. This was his home. He wasn't just passing through Dothan. He lived there, and um, interestingly, okay, so imagine, let's see, which one should I tell you first? Okay, imagine us here in Chambersburg, right? Most of us, although I know some of you live up, up the mountains, but um, most of us live down here, and when we look out our windows, we see the mountains that surround us here. So it might not be a fertile valley, but Chambersburg is a relatively small town. Some of you live in an even smaller version of Chambersburg, but you can relate. This was not Philadelphia or New York City. This was not a big city. This was just a small town where Elisha lived. Amazingly, this is not the first time Dothan is mentioned in the Bible. Way back in the book of Genesis, 
Um, oh my, an exciting thing happened here because all of you know, you may not know Elijah and Elisha, but all of you, me too, know about Joseph, right? Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. He was thrown into the well by his brothers in a town called, you guessed it, Dothan. Here it is in um, Genesis 37. Listen to this in 16, 17, 18. Um, Joseph arrived and said, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan, but they saw him in the distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Okay, so it's just another, I mean, for one thing, the Bible is just a complete whole. And I love it when we are able to see those connections, something that's very familiar. And then we find out, oh my goodness, that's also here. Um, so this is where Big Brother came along, Reuben, and said, don't kill him. Let's just put him down this cistern. And then we, he was hoping to rescue him rescued Joseph, but instead they sold him to a caravan. Dothan was a town, a small town, but it was on the route between Egypt and Samaria where the king's palace was. So it was a great trade route and that was why Dothan was uh, familiar and known and this is where Elisha lived. Again though, my friends, we talked about the plant, we talked about the axe head, and now we talk about Joseph all down in the pit where it seems impossible to get out. But God, but God had a plan and reaches down to rescue us from those pits, those cisterns, the soil or the water that we feel like we are down. In. Let's get back to our story because it's getting exciting. He lived in Dothan. Then he sent horses. This is the king of Aram. He sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. If you have your Bible, do not read ahead. This is amazing. This is a sneak attack. They went by night. If you were watching a movie, and this was modern day, you would see the army gathering to go get this one guy in the middle of the night. And that's what the soldiers did. They went and surrounded Elisha's house. Okay. On the next verse we read, when the servant of the man of God, this we find out earlier, but he's not mentioned by name here. This man's name is Gehazi. Let's say that together, Gehazi. Okay, anybody looking for a name for your child? That's a good one, Gehazi. He was, he was Elisha's servant, manservant. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Right? Here he is. Imagine yourself. You had a good night's sleep and you get up and you begin your day. If you're like me, one of the first things I do is make my coffee. And then while the coffee is dripping, I go and I open the curtains that have been closed all night. And when I open the curtains, I see the hills and I see the backyard of the neighbor's house and I just kind of walk around the house a little bit and then my coffee is dripped. I was going to say perked. Um, you know, and I begin to have a quiet time with the Lord. Gehazi opened the curtains. And what did he see? He saw that the house was surrounded by an army that had come for Elisha. Oh, my word. 
he woke up Elisha. What shall we do? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt, I am in the pits. I don't know what to do. This thing is way bigger than me. I am buried under, snowed under, down in the, in the well, and I can't get out of, my, out of here myself. What shall we do? Do you want to know what Gehazi did? Do you want to know what Elisha did? Let's read on. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. What? Those who are with us are more than those who are with them? You have got to be kidding. I'm sure Gehazi thought Elisha has lost it. He's lost his mind. He cannot count. It's me and him against a vast army that is surrounding our house. What are we going to do? And he says, those who are with us. It reminds me of a passage in 1 John. I just want to turn there before we find out what happens. 1 John says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, that is the evil forces in the world, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who lives in you, my friends, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit is in you, and it's greater than the power of anyone Satan included in the world. So this Old Testament story has New Testament truth in it for us. This ancient story has truth for us in this modern day. The one who is with you and in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And Elisha said, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The next verse says, And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. God's armies were on the mountains, around the hills, greater than the army that was surrounding the house. God's armies were ready to fart. <laughs> and this is live. They were ready to fight on behalf of Elisha. Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Friends, sometimes we just need a different perspective. The things that we're seeing, the way that we're feeling, this feeling of despair is not the truth. It's not the thing that we need to see. We need to pray just those four words. Open my eyes, Lord. It's in praying that prayer and having our eyes opened to what God would show us, that God is greater than anything that we can face. It changes fear into peace, problems into opportunities, disappointment into blessing, despair into hope, and defeat into victory. What are you facing today? We have sung it throughout. We have prayed it and we will continue to pray. Open my eyes, Lord. Friends, we are surrounded. We are surrounded by many things. Sometimes we feel like we're surrounded in ways that are hopeless, but God. God opens our eyes. Here are these couple of verses, first from Psalm 
chapter 5, verse 12. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. And then in Psalm 32, verses 7 and 10. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in God. And then, of course, we know that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone on before, who are now cheering us on in our walk with Christ. May this be our prayer as we go through our week. Open my eyes, Lord. Let's pray. We praise you, Lord God, for this amazing story, for the truth of your world, word in Old and New Testament. We praise you, Lord God, that we, like Elisha, like Gehazi, can have our eyes opened spiritually so that we can see and know and be confident of your presence surrounding us. We pray now as we go from this place that we would surrender to all that you would have for us that we would respond obediently so that we may grow in the truth and the ease of seeing you, of having our perspective changed to a way that brings us hope and victory. We will give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 382 is our closing song and our prayer as we go from this. There's not another I, open my eye kind of song that I wanted to sing, but um, have thine own way, Lord. We're just going to sing maybe the first and the last verses. Depends on how I'm feeling about my voice. Here we go, a little sip of coffee. I'll do a trick. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it. Let's sing the last verse. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. May God bless and keep you, give you a new perspective, open your eyes and surround you with God's loving kindness. We'll look for you next week. Have a good one.